Good evening and welcome to EBTV's coverage of East Brunswick High School Athletics. Tonight, football against the Vikings of South Brunswick. Hi, I'm Ken Soroka along with Rich Whalen. And Rich, a couple of weeks ago, Bears seemed to have destiny in their own hands. But after a couple of disappointing games, everything is on the line tonight. Yeah, we were just talking about earlier, uh, I guess the la latest scenario is if East Brunswick beats South Brunswick tonight and then Howell loses that they'll have a uh, state playoff um, berth clinched. You know, you can look at that and say, you know, East Brunswick had destiny in their own hands. But I think if you told East Brunswick they'd have a shot if they won and got a little help to make the playoffs this year after, you know, the players they lost, I think they'd be pretty happy with that scenario. The last time we were here, uh, it was a very tight defensive game. East Brunswick posting a, a second shutout. And then two games, uh, the Sayreville game and the Piscataway game, games I guess we'd really like to forget right now. Yeah, the way East Brunswick plays, you know, they're, they're a ball control type team. So if a team gets a lead on them, like Piscataway and Sayreville did, uh, you know, it's tough for them to come back. They were, they've only scored six points in the last two games. So their offense uh, hopefully is going to awake tonight and, uh, you know, put some more points on the board. This is a South Brunswick team that apparently has two good quarterbacks, one who runs and one who passes. How do you defend against that? Yeah, it's tough. I mean, uh, East Brunswick's done a, a decent job against teams that have, you know, uh, good players where they've limited the big plays. Uh, that's the same thing tonight because, you know, East Brunswick could be doing a good job the whole game. And, you know, when you have game breakers like that, it's it's one or two plays where you get a, get a score. So East Brunswick just has to uh, stay um, mistake-free, uh, keep South Brunswick offense off the field, and then, you know, try to limit the big play. Uh, it, it, are, they, are the players looking maybe a little bit ahead and saying, well, we've got this one wrapped up, or maybe the state playoff game, they're, they're thinking a week from now rather than worrying about this game? Is that a danger? Uh, I, I would hope not. You know, coming off two two losses where they got blown out, I think they're they're fired up to play. It's senior night. The seniors, I think, are going to be ready to go. Uh, South Brunswick has been playing really uh, pretty good of late, so I think, uh, you know, Coach Board and their staff, uh, you know, have been watching film, and, and this is a dangerous team, so uh, they can't be looking ahead and I think uh, they'll be ready to go and like I said senior night maybe we'll have a little bit more uh, energy. Well we also heard that South Brunswick needs this game as well to get into the state playoffs so the battle of two teams to see who's motivated more I guess. Exactly uh, I look like their fans had a little tailgate they were fired up the players look fired up so this should be this should be a great football game. Again this is the game that will decide at least with some degree of certainty whether or not East Brunswick makes the state playoffs and has a chance to defend their Central Jersey Group 4 title. It is senior night and we'll be back right after this with the senior night festivities. And it is senior night and we have a good number of senior players who will be introduced with their parents. Um, and again, this senior class, if they were on the team last year, were part of the championship team that won the Central Jersey Group 4 title. Dennis Spinelli, accompanied by his parents, Karen and Dennis. Number five, Jared Lynch, accompanied by parents, Crystal and Michael. John Farkas, accompanied by parents Lisa and John. Hugo Anamelu, accompanied by parents Joseph and Doreen. Nick Goodzak, accompanied by his parents, Lisa and Mark. Rich Yura, accompanied by his parents, Richard Pat. Kyle Winters, accompanied by his parents, Keith and Kathleen. Julian Quinn, accompanied by his parents, Paula and John. Josh Todd, accompanied by his parents, Michael and Sarah. Matt Aziz, accompanied by his parents, Favad and Mona. Kyle McSpedden, accompanied by his parents, Bill and Jody. 
Accompanied by parents Dawn and David, number 52, Jack Young. Jack Young, accompanied by his parents Dawn and David. Troy Bailey, accompanied by his parents Mike and Nancy. Joe Quagliari, accompanied by his parents Maurice and Linda. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Accompanied man? by Father Bill, number 69, Milton Clark. Milt Colhet, accompanied by his father Milton. Accompanied by parents Jorge and Lucy, number 70, Chris Jaramillo. Chris Jaramillo. Accompanied by Jorge and Lucia. Matt Taco, accompanied by his parents Bill and Jean. Jim Mullen, accompanied by his parents Jim and Deb. Mike Goldberg, accompanied by his parents Steve and Donna. Accompanied by parents Tina and Jose, number 98, Augusto, Augusto Silva. Silva, accompanied by his parents Tina and Jose. And the team manager. And team manager. Diane and Jean, Devin Messia. Devin Messia, accompanied by Dan her parents Diana and Jean. And these are the senior members of the East Brunswick High School football team and their parents. All right, and again, congratulations to these seniors on and thanks for their help and their parents' help in making East Brunswick football success. And we'll be back with the kickoff of the first half in just a moment. Okay, guys, let me just go over this rule right now, okay? You're the captain of your team, three of you. You are the captain of your team. If you can't handle your players, we will step in and then we'll take control. You understand what I'm saying, right? Coaches have been notified. Any mountain, green talks to green, white talks to white. Anything else, you go sit on the sideline for a player or two. Coaches are warned, okay? Sportsmanship. Whistle's blown, play's over, ball leave it where it is, or give it to an official, okay? Any questions? Okay. It'll be your choice, I'll flip the coin, we'll let it hit the ground, you call it while it's in the air, okay? What are you gonna call? Tails. Tails. You call tails. Let me yes, see, tails. that looks like a tails, tails, yeah. tails, and there's the head, okay? You won the toss, you want the ball. Which goal do you want to defend? Okay, you're gonna, right here, just right here, straight line, come on. Right here, straight line. Straight line, guys, that's it. White one, okay? White one to toss, and we'll receive. Green will defend, okay? Shake hands, guys. South Brunswick won the toss and will receive to start the first half. South Brunswick in white with gold pants, gold helmets, black numerals. East Brunswick wearing the green with white pants, white helmets. Here at Jade Oil Field, I'm Ken Soroka along with Rich Whalen. No wind to speak of tonight, although it's a rather brisk fall night. Perfect for football. And a meaningful game here tonight. Both teams needing to win to have a chance to make the playoffs. So. Should should see a good football game. East Brunswick coming in four and three. South Brunswick five and two. East Brunswick coming off a pair of losses to Sayreville and Piscataway in blowout fashion, so they're looking to bounce back. South Brunswick playing uh, well of late. Tyron Fairman back deep, awaiting the kick. Referee will blow his whistle and will be underway momentarily. And senior number 98, Augusto Silva, has the honors here to kick the ball for East Brunswick.
A bouncer up the middle, field it. And making it out to the 32 yard line is Javon Tyree. And South Brunswick will operate there. Give it the 32, first and 10. And South Brunswick is uh, coming into the game averaging over 25 points a game. So they definitely have some playmakers here on offense. And it's going to be East Brunswick's uh, job on defense to limit the big plays. And then uh, East Brunswick offense to try to do what they've been doing all year and uh, ball control offense. Take some time off the clock. Nick Muha, number 16, at quarterback for the Vikings. And on the keeper, he brings it out just over the 35-yard line. Gain of four, call it the 36. Gain of four, second and six. Jake Wojewitz on the tackle. Single setback, Trey Hall. Muha pitches, pitches it to Tyree. Tyree gets it out almost to midfield. A little hesitation there on the Bears defense, but it looks like Tyree is hurt on the play as he is kneeling down close to the Viking sideline. First down though for South Brunswick as referees will allow for the attention there of the injured player. And you said that right, Ken. Uh, Tyree made a little stutter step, just hesitated and kind of froze uh, number 23, uh, Rich Ura, and just showed good speed there. Quarterback made a good decision and, and pitched the ball just as he was getting hit there. This game will be rebroadcast on November 13th at 4 p.m. and November, yeah, November 13th at 4 p.m. and November 14th at 8 p.m. And also, if you've missed the game, you could watch it whenever, wherever on the internet. You have to go to the EBTV website, www.ebtv3.org, and click on Video On Demand. Click on the sports section and select what game or program you want to watch. If you can't remember that, just go to the East Brunswick Public Library website, ebpl.org, and click on the EBTV3 link on the lower left side of the page. And you saw there Phil Hostler, the longtime trainer for East Brunswick, taking a look at number two, Javon Tyree. And they kind of rolled him over now on his back. I don't know, maybe if he came down on the ball, got the wind knocked yeah, out of him, maybe. Yeah. A rib injury or something. Right. Didn't look like anybody rolled on his ankle. He's sitting up right now and up and walking it off. We'll walk over to the sideline there. And I think we'll see him back in the game, just how they were looking at him, how he's walking up the field. And that ball now spotted at the 40. Nine, almost 49 yard line of the Vikings that will operate first and 10. Inside handoff, stuffed by the Bears. Joe Coglieri stopped up the replacement there for Tyree. That's Trey Hall. Yeah, nice job by a few Bears, like you said. Um, also, Julian Quinnen was there. Rich Year, there was a number of Bears. No gain, so second and 10. East Brunswick looking like it's getting a dose of its own medicine here with the, the option quarterback. Now back to pass, Muha looking downfield. And getting tangled up there, Ty, TJ Taylor. Yeah, number number 11 who had the coverage there, Hugo Anamalu, uh, got a good jam on him uh, within the look within the five yards and kind of just threw off the, the timing of that route. And Muha was looking right there. He wasn't looking any other place. Right. He had perhaps a, a chance on the far sideline, but his eyes were fixed. Yeah, he was looking there the whole time. Third and 10. 
Bears looking for a stop here to get their first possession. Single setback behind Muha. Bears showing blitz, back off. Now pressure on the outside, the pass is wide. And I don't think the ball is slick. We were out there on the turf. That turf was, was dry. The rains that we had over the last 36 hours or so ended this morning, so the turf has had a chance to dry out. But it will bring up a fourth down. Jared Lynch dropping back. Waiting for this punt. Uh-oh, the ball's on the ground. Ball is on the ground. Still on the ground, bouncing around. And South Brunswick has it, because that was kicked around. Looked like for the Vikings. Phil Ede, number 51, finally jumped on it. Yeah, few few players, both on the Bears and the Vikings uh, side, had a chance at that. And that, that's the first time I've noticed number 24, Kyle Winters, who uh, muffed that punt back there. I, I know Lynch is usually back there, but they decided to go with the two two people and back. He kicked it away from Lynch right. and put it close to the far sideline. Inside handoff, Bears stuff that one. Look like Nick Goodzak there on the tackle, as well as a couple other Bears wrapping him up. And and so far, South Brunswick has had trouble, uh, you know, in the middle of that Bears defense. When they've been able to get outside a little bit, they've had a little more success. And, uh, you know, I haven't seen yet. I don't know if you have, Ken. I don't think uh, number two, Javon Tyree, has been back in the game since he went down. Or maybe that's him on the left wing now. Yeah. Nope, that's number three, so. Still banged up a little. I think that's a big part of their offense. Muha with the keeper. Gets stuffed for a loss. Nice play there by number 18, Jake Wojewicz, and also number five, Jared Lynch there. They were not fooled at all. And I'm just looking at the sideline now. I see number two, Javon Tyrese on the, on the bench. Helmet off. So it doesn't look like he's coming in anytime soon. Third and 10. Bears have been here before. This might be two down territory for South Brunswick. Wide receivers split. Muha drops back to pass. And brought down from the backside, Jared Lynch. Drops Muha for a seven yard loss. And that, I guess, takes the yeah. two-down territory out of the equation. And listen, I'm not a football coach, but I, I don't get that. You're, you're uh, under center. Why fake the hand? Who, who thinks you're going to hand the ball off there? It, it takes you a while to get back there, and then by the time you're, you're set and you're looking downfield, it uh, gives the defense extra time. I like, you know, shotgun or, or don't even do the play fake there. Jared Lynch back deep as the singles. Receiver waiting for this punt, and who almost blocked. Lynch calls for a fair catch, lets it bounce over his head and into the end zone. Smart play, Jared Lynch, as the Bears will finally get possession with 7.48 left to go in the first quarter on their own 20-yard line. And like you said, good job by Lynch there. You're, you're taught as a punt returner, usually if the ball's over your head and you're on the 10-yard line to let it go over your head, and you hope what happened happens there where you have a touchback. I'd like to pass along our congratulations, GMC honors, Coach Brian McInerney, Girls Tennis Coach of the Year, and Coach Kara Sefcik for the Girls Gymnastics Program, GMC Coaches of the Year. Mike Sayek, quarterback for the Bears, pitches to Quinton, bounces it outside, gets outside, breaks it, one person to beat, stiff arm, and brought down. That looked like it had zero yards all over it, but Quinton was able to bounce it off right side and gets it into Viking territory at the 43. And if it wasn't for number three, Daryl Harper, for the Vikings there, that, that would have been six. And like you said, I was almost ready to say, nice job by South Brunswick uh, kind of stringing that play out. And, and uh, that's what happens when you don't wrap up, though. A big, a big player like Jared Lynch, you got to make sure that you grab some jersey and bring him down. A couple of shoulder tackles in uh Big play there for East Brunswick. Mike Sy, number four quarterback. Todd Quinton and Lynch in the backfield. 
Jared Lynch up the middle. Weaves his way inside the 40, brought down at the 38-yard line. They'll bring up a second down and five. And both Lynch and, and Quinn on their runs uh, doing a nice job of keeping those legs moving. They're, they're um, you know, South Brunswick on that play probably made contact a yard or two uh, at the line of scrimmage there, but kept his legs moving and, and got almost five there. Second down and five. John Farkas split out to the top of your screen. That's Mike Sion. The keeper gets close to a first down. We'll see how the referees spot this one. And Mike Sion's done a nice job of that all year. He just does a nice, consistent job. Isn't overly flashy. Isn't isn't the quickest player, but he makes good reads. He uh, doesn't turn the ball over. And uh, East Brunswick is moving now. They're cha they changed the field possession here and uh, are doing what they want to do, keeping that South Brunswick offense uh, off the field and churning some clock. That was one of the few turnovers of the, the last few games that has not come back to bite the Bears. That was their flag on the play there, as I don't think Quinton was set. And that's what the call is there, an the illegal shift. as. Quinton did not get back and set for a full second before the play was snapped. Now the, the result of the play was a minimal gain, so there's a discussion here whether or not they will accept the penalty. We got motion, offense, five yards, replay first down. And that's one of those inexcusable penalties, uh, you know, when you're a back or a receiver. Um, well, you know, is that a matter of timing? He's supposed to be at a certain spot? Yeah, usually, that, I mean. At a certain time? Yeah, or? unless there was confusion with the play and he wasn't sure. But you, you've got to know when, when the play comes in and you're lining up that you're, you're set, uh, unless you're unsure of the play or the quarterback's rushing because of maybe um, the play clock. First and 15 now as the ball is at the 37-yard line. Sai will keep it and gets maybe three. Nice form tackle there by number 12, Craig uh, Cleffy for South Brunswick. Now East Brunswick doesn't throw the ball much and, and I'm not saying that they should get away from that with the clock, but this might be a good down uh, second and long maybe to... Uh, well, they pounded up the, last, up the middle of the last five or six plays. Maybe it's time to kind of work off an end somewhere. You know, kind of naked bootleg there, and side again up the middle mostly. Looked like that formation with two receivers in the slot to the left. That that's where that was headed for the extra blocking, but no. Sai cuts it back right and only gains again two or three yards. Brings up a third and nine. And it looks like we're going to have a wildcat type formation as Mike Sai comes off the field unless he's. Yeah, Jared Lynch is going to run this play in a wildcat. And they were thinking coming into the year, they weren't sure who was going to be their quarterback, Mike Sire or Jared Lynch. So, you know, you can't, if you're South Brunswick, you might assume that he's going to run the ball here. But he, he can throw the ball as well, so. Uh, from the shotgun. The pitch is to Quentin. Quentin breaks it off left tackle. Oh, and we're going to get a holding penalty, unfortunately, on that. As I think they're going to, they're going to flag even Jared Lynch for a hold. That was in his direction. And that will negate a, an excellent play there and ruin the surprise, too, which is part of that. There was a couple really good blocks there to spring them. We got blocking below the waist. Offense, 23. 23. And that's on Rich Ura blocking below the waist. And you could hear Coach Borden wanted to know who. It's a it's a 15 yard penalty that chop block or blocking below the waist, and that since that had even occurred behind the line of scrimmage, that even makes it even worse. It's more of a 17 yard penalty. So now the ball is on the 49, and East Brunswick has to get to the 23. So it's 26, right? Yeah, third and 26. Jared Lynch again. Oh, and that's a no. ball ground and. 
That's the second turnover there as South Brunswick looks like they have fallen on it and they have at midfield. That's just sloppy football there by the Bears. Good drive that disintegrated quickly. And South Brunswick will take over with 3.57 left to go in the first. Looked like one of those plays too. East Brunswick just was going to run in and try to get as much as they could and try to pin South Brunswick back. And that's just, uh, you know, that, that's, a, that's a bad turnover. That's a uh, unforced error. This, this might be a, a shot for South Brunswick to go deep here. This first and 10, you just got the ball back, maybe take a shot down the field. Uha on the pitch. And gang tackled for a three or four yard loss is Romany Botros. Vikings, no chance as he, as he hesitated. He didn't break that out across the field. That's where that north and south, gotta run north and south, not right. east and west. Especially if you don't have the speed and not saying he's not a quick guy, but you know. Well, you if, give the Bears a chance to pursue yeah. and, and they'll, they have the speed back there to pursue. Julian Quinton, Jared Lynch, you know, Jake Woj, which they can pursue quickly. All right. All right, the loss of four on the play. It's the second down and 14 now. Muha back to pass. He's got 12 wide open. Has, man wide open. And staying on his feet down to the nine yard line is Romani Botros. Yeah, you called that one right down the middle. Muha had enough time to find him cutting across I, I, the middle. I see a flag though. And what's the flag for here? He's picking they're it up. Picking it, they're picking it up, so no infraction on the play, and that play will stand. East Brunswick's a little lucky there, actually, that he didn't score, because he really was open for a while and uh, took a little while for that pass to get there by Muha. But still, uh, South Brunswick is uh, in pretty good shape here, first and goal from about the uh, eight and a half yard line. Trey Hall, set back behind Muha. That has not worked all day, and uh, South Brunswick seems content to try going up the middle there with Muha on the keeper, where their most successful plays have been out wide. Yeah, and uh, I mean, really, I, I, this um, injury to number two, Javon Tyree, I think hurts him as well, because he looked like he had a, a little uh, speed for them. I, I see him still on the, he's got his helmet on the sideline, but I, I think that hurts them as well. Full house backfield now behind Muha. Two wide receivers split. The handoff goes to the second back through. That's Daryl Harper. Harper manages probably to get back to the original line of scrimmage, maybe a yard. That'll bring up third and goal from about the seven. Yeah, a pretty tough run there. He looked like he was stopped and he kind of dragged the Bears defender there for a couple of yards, but that was a long uh, developing play as well. So it. We'll see here what South Brunswick is, see if they get a little creative here. Seems like East Brunswick's doing a pretty good job pursuing it, so they, if that, they have some type of counter play, or maybe they'll take a shot with one of the receivers. Wide receiver split. Muha is gonna go back to pass, pursued. Tries to fire it short of, of the goal to Harper. And Jake Wojowicz got in the face of Muha and will have, looks like a fourth down and a field goal attempt here. No, it's tough about that play. He's, he's a righty quarterback. He's rolling, first of all, it's a long developing play and he's rolling uh, to his left. So he's got to stop, get his shoulder square. That's, that's not an easy throw for uh, anyone, let alone a high school quarterback. So, you know, if I'm the quarterback, I'd like to be rolling out to my right. It's just uh, easier to make that throw. Jaramillo, no good as that one was wide right. So the Bears again dodge another bullet on a turnover. Jaramillo's kick was wide with 123 left to go. Bears will take over at the 20 yard line, first and 10. Well, so far the turnovers haven't hurt. The only thing that it hurts right now is East Brunswick is pinned back 
um, a little bit at their own 20. But as far as points, it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Mike Sai, busted play. Looks like any, oh, just, Took a good that hit. looked a lot worse at the end. Yeah, it looked like number six uh, for South Brunswick, Stephen Mitchell, six uh, with a nice hit there. Yeah, but he also came up with the ball th thinking that he had, but uh, he had come up with it uh, on a fumble, but they ruled that Mike Sai was down. Gain of about six, ball's at the 26. Again, Todd, Quinton, and Lynch behind Mike Sai. Lynch trying to dip and dodge through. May work on some, time, some cases, but not enough room there to get through. Gain of maybe two, and that brings up a third. Well, they're going to give him a better spot, I thought. Yeah, about a one, right? Yep. A third and one. May not get this play off as time is winding down. We'll see here. Third and one. And they do. Um, oof. And just sloppy. Sloppy. Just, right? Just sloppy there, not not knowing what the play was. I, I, could that be that Mike looked up, Mike Side looked up at the clock and I, saw it getting down to zero and didn't. didn't know whether or not to run the play. Mm. So that drive, that loses six yards on the play. And the Bears will have to punt to start the second quarter of play. And that's one thing I've been impressed with uh, the games I've been to. East Brunswick's look pretty sharp and, and uh, you know, running things smoothly in, in this game for whatever reason. You know, you have the dropped punt. South Brunswick doesn't capitalize. You have a, a, a bad turnover around midfield, which South Brunswick misses a field goal. And, and right there, just, uh, you know, whether it's someone not knowing the play or uh, confusion with the way they're set up. And, and I haven't really seen this from uh, East Brunswick, at least uh, for the most part. So the, the good thing, if you're Coach Borden here and you see him in the huddle, is it's still 0-0. Zero, zero. You just have to, you know, kind of get the kinks out here. I, I don't know if it's a little bit of a hangover effect from, you know, a couple of blowout losses to, to two very good teams, but they, they just don't look in sync right now. And this is the last regular game that qualifies for the state playoffs in both South Brunswick and East Brunswick need a victory. East Brunswick also needs a little help to get into the state playoffs. And the snap was a little off, and the ball's not going to get much past midfield. Harper lets it go, and it'll roll dead at the 45. I just feel in high school, I mean, uh, sometimes punt returners get so deep. You know, a lot, a lot of the punts from high school punters are not going to be a lot of hang time, and they're going to be a little bit shorter. So, Well, it looks like Silva had a little bit of difficulty, and he actually had to take a step back right. to settle himself and then go forward. So didn't get a chance to really fully get his feet behind it. Muha will again. The Vikings under center as they're moving left to right now on your TV screen. Again, I like this first down, maybe trying to pass if I'm South Brunswick. Inside handoff, stop for a loss. Harper, and again, the absence of Javon Tyree still a factor here as the South Brunswick was not able to get anything going on the ground. There were one big play came on a pass play over the middle. Right, and Tyree had that decent 15 yard run where he got hurt on. And other than that, not much with the running game. And East Brunswick's done a nice job when Muhaz tried to pass, except for that one time getting good pressure on him. Fullback, and that's a handoff, then that time, the one hole that did open up and Trey Hall was able to bust it right through and get more than enough for a first down. Brings it into the Bears territory as the ball is spotted at the 42. 
and he hit, he hit the hole hard there, and a nice job by that offensive line for the Vikings. First and 10, South Brunswick. Single setback, wide receiver split. Little counter. And that's Botros who had the big reception set up that field goal attempt. Gain of five. Again, that's the, maybe that's the thing to do with, with you know, trying to get the Bears to over-pursue and the misdirection there. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta keep the defense honest. You know, if, you, if you're um, just kind of, your line's going one way and the ball carry's going one way, you know, sometimes uh, the defense will over-pursue, like you said, and, and uh, that counter is gonna be open. Bears showing blitz. Muha, pitch. And getting into the backfield, Rich Yura got deep penetration and managed to trip up the ball carrier for a three yard loss. Yeah, nice job there. He kept the outside contain and then made the ball carrier cut inside, didn't allow him to get outside of him. So nice play there. Third and seven now. And again, we think that might be a two down territory here if you can get positive yardage out of this play. And these are downs at all levels, these third downs where, you know, teams that can convert at a decent rate keep drives going. And, and uh, you know, this is what wins, wins games a lot. This, this looks like a passing formation right from the get go. Wide open is Botros, and he's going to go in for a touchdown. As, as somebody lost contact with him on that outside and didn't take much. Or, I'm sorry, that's Craig Cleffey, I'm sorry. 12. And you have to give uh, South Brunswick's offensive line there credit because Muha had, had plenty of time, number 62, Joe Quagliari, just not quite in time. Uh, you know, so he probably shouldn't have been that open, but give South Brunswick's offensive line some credit because Muha had plenty of time. And the extra point is no good. Cleffey picked up. Uh, was that a case where somebody thought they had coverage uh, in the back and, and kind of passed off yeah, responsibility? You know what, usually with, with Coach Borden's defense, it's usually, you know, um, a lot of times man-to-man -man defense or at least a cover two where they have usually, you know, a couple safeties in that uh, situation over the top or at least one safety that's patrol in the middle. So someone should have got there earlier, but uh, yeah, it looked like just the coverage that someone was in the flat and there, there was no safety. Uh, behind for help. They might have been also a little aggressive there where they sent a couple people and weren't able to, to get pressure on. So if you don't get pressure on, someone's going to be open if the quarterback has enough time. So uh, that missed extra point, though, you, you hate that as a, as a coach on South Brunswick. You, you get the score, but you miss that extra point. So. And Cleffy gets the opportunity to kick off, it looks like, for the Vikings, Jared Lynch. Rich Yura and Donald Rochelle will be back deep for the Bears. So where a good kickoff return, get some good field position, can turn the momentum a little bit. Lynch gonna run up and under this one, takes it at the 15. Got some Trying room. Trying to go around the left sideline, looking for a block. Breaks it through. One man to beat the kicker. And a, and a touchdown saving tackle by Cleffey, the kicker. He scores the touchdown. He saves a touchdown for the Vikings. But Jared Lynch takes it from the 15 all the way to the Viking 29-yard line. And that's what East Brunswick needed there, a little momentum shift. Lynch did a nice job of, of being patient. East Brunswick's kickoff team, return team there, did a nice job of setting up some blocks. And like you said, if not for number 12, Craig Cleffey, East Brunswick's in, so good field position for East Brunswick here.
Masai quarterback, same backfield setup for the Bears. Lynch looking for a block, cuts it back inside. And wrapping up nicely, TJ Taylor kept Lynch. Lynch had a hole there and he was looking like looking to break it down the right side. Trying to cut back against the grain, but does manage to pick up five. That's one thing that does look open though, that, that cutback. Uh, South Brunswick's really pursuing and, and they've been able a couple times to find some holes cutting back. Lynch again, this time looking to drive the pile forward. Does manage to get enough yardage for the first down. That little effort, second effort there at the end falls forward to about the 27. 28 yard line will be enough for a Bears first down. And nice job, Bo, on those both first and second down plays of that left side of the East Brunswick line, really exploding off the ball and moving that defensive line back of South Brunswick. And that, that's really where a lot of, you know, we don't talk much about the lines and, and individual players, but, you know, you win the battle both offensively and defensively on that line, you're, you're going to win a lot of games. A little bit of a different setup there as Mike Sy fakes the inside handoff, spins out of a tackle, and manages to rush it in for a touchdown. 18-yard touchdown, Mike Sy. That was just all individual effort there. Kept his legs moving, didn't give up on the play. Did a nice job with the fake up the middle. Got a few South Brunswick players to think the fullback had the ball. And... Never, never stopped his legs from moving. So now with this extra point here, East Brunswick can take the lead. And give a big assist there to, to Jared Lynch on the big kickoff return to put him in position to be able to take the lead here. Spot, snap, kick. Placement is good, kick is good, and the Bears will take the lead 7-6. Well, earlier in the game, East Brunswick special teams let them down a little bit with a uh, punt that they dropped. South Brunswick wasn't able to capitalize. South Brunswick special teams missed a field goal, missed an extra point. And East Brunswick's special teams here on this drive, a nice kickoff return to put them in good field position and then making the extra point to put them up 7-6. So big turn of events in about a little over a minute, I believe. South Brunswick scored with a little over nine minutes. and. A little over a minute later, East Brunswick uh, counters right back to take the lead. And that's always big uh, in any sport where you answer back right away. And East Brunswick was able to do that. Tyron Fairman and... And just got some information there that that was three plays, 29 yards, and a minute eight that East Brunswick scored. So Tyron Fairman on the far side, Daryl Harper on the near side awaiting this kick. Again, a bouncer up the middle. Fairman has trouble with it. And Kyle Winters wraps him up right there at the 15. Could have been a lot worse for the Vikings. You see that ball going right through the five hole. A nice job there by, like you said, number 24, Kyle Winters. And, you know, he had a little mistake before with the, the drop punt, but he comes back and makes a nice play on special teams. So that's what, that's what you like to see. Thanks again. This is senior night. So at halftime of the, this game, we'll be introducing our senior cheerleaders and senior members of our East Brunswick High School marching band, Muha under center. Two wide receivers split down to the near side of your screen. Inside handoff. Again, not much going on there. Trey Hall unable to get more than two on that one. Second down and eight. And that interior of East Brunswick uh, defensive line there has done a nice job of you know, I think maybe one play to the fullback, Trey Hall had, had a big run. Other than that, there haven't, hasn't been much up the middle. Right. 
First man through gets the handoff, gets Ball's it out. Ball's on to the, the ground. Ball looks like, yeah, it does look like it was on the ground, but no, I think the referee said he was down. I don't know about that. It looked like that ball came out. Lou, I think South Brunswick was able to get on top of it anyway, but it looked like the ball came out early. A gain of a couple brings up a third and a call a long three here. Key for the Bears here to get a stop to really cement this momentum shift and get the ball back with you know, in pretty decent field position, you assume. Three wide receivers in the formation here for the Vikings, but the handoff is inside, goes nowhere, and I, that I don't understand. Where you? They gave him a nice spot, though. Look at this spot. Well, we'll see how left foot, right foot. You need to get to the 32. A 31 and a half about, right? It's not quite. I know, you're about right about the 32. That's close. It's close. That's a That was a generous spot, no? What do you think? Uh, it looked like it. That's, that's going to be tight. I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to say about a nose of a football short. We'll get a good look here on TV. What do you think, Ken? Uh, yeah, I think you're about right. Nose of a football, a couple inches, you know, not much. Oh, oh. wow. <laughs> well, we couldn't, couldn't see, quite see it. Well, but we couldn't it. see it. That's <laughs> what we, we'll, make it, we'll make the excuse that we couldn't see it correctly, <laughs> but that was a very generous spot there. If uh, we had instant replay here, Coach Borden might throw that red flag and challenge that spot. First and 10 for the Vikings. Harper in the backfield. Cleffy in motion. Now Muha on the keeper. Finds open space. Trying to break it around the outside. Farkas has him corralled. Get, forces him out at the 45. But uh, did we see a marker on the play? Uh, I don't know. That's a, that's a bad no. call if it is on the receiver because he, he didn't hold for South Brunswick. And it looks like it is going to be on South Brunswick. Right, on the receiver on Farkas, but. Got holding on the offense. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. That doesn't kill them in terms of, you know, where the ball is going to be here. It's still first down, but, you know, they're going to lose about probably 20 yards in field position here. That will be a first down in about three or four, five maybe. As that penalty occurred past the first down marker. So the ball's not going to be on the 32, so it is five yards. So it's first and five. And looks like a change in quarterback. T.J. Perkowski looks like. Did, he, did yeah. I see that come in? I like this first and five short. Maybe throw one here. They're not going to do that. Ball's on course. the ground. Prakowski dropped it and picking it up right there for the Bears. Either Quinton. Yep, Julian Quinton. And you bring in a cold quarterback. And as I said, they caught TJ Prakowski coming in and, and boom, right away. First play, ball on the ground. And that's the first legitimate turnover here by the Vikings. Another one of those long developing plays. You, you fake it to the fullback and then. Uh, you give it to the next back through, and the East Brunswick has time to penetrate. Farkas and Quinton are split out. Mike Sy drops back, and he is sacked immediately. Flag and there's on the flag play on the well. play. I think somebody might have gotten a quick jump going across, or that was an illegal formation. Not enough men on the line. We'll, we'll hear the call here. And it looks like it's against the Bears. Illegal shift on the offense. That penalty's declined. Second down. You know what, I like Mike's eye showed some maturity there because a quarterback, he, East Brunswick doesn't throw the ball much. So you, you get a chance to throw the ball, you, you want to, but it, he did a nice job. You saw uh, the receiver he was looking for was covered and, and just you know took his medicine there, didn't, didn't force anything. That's not always easy, especially when you know East Brunswick might throw it five or six times if they're lucky a game. 
you, you want to fire it up no matter what. So Now from the shotgun, Mike Sy, third, second and 13. And that play loses even more yardage. I mean, that's, is that because they don't, the South Brunswick doesn't respect the pass? That they don't think that, that uh, uh, under those circumstances, Sy is going to throw the ball? Yeah, it could be. I mean, you know, I, I think, you know, also South Brunswick is just in this part of the field being a little bit more aggressive, sending some people. Um, you know, plus when you're, when you have a second and long like they did, you're, you're a little, sometimes a little more aggressive. Third and even longer now, third and about 16. Ball's on the 35 yard line. Bears got to get to just inside the 20. And the pitch is to Jared Lynch, who's going to try to make as much of it as he can. Gets down to the 30. Now, in a situation like this, the punt. Yeah, it doesn't better, really do better much. Better than even though. money chance, your punt's going to go into the end zone right. and you're only going to gain 10 yards if it's a touchback. Yeah, so it you looks like I Coach Borden's going to go for it on fourth down, fourth and 12. Hey, throw, up, throw one up in the end zone, too. If you, you know, throw it to your best athlete if he catches it, great. If not, the other guy catches it, you can tackle him right away. I mean, obviously, you can go for the first down as well, run a play where you get the first down. But I think Coach Borden is going to let this clock run down a little bit and maybe take the delay of game and try to get back a little further and give his punter a chance to uh, drop it somewhere inside the 10. And now he just called the timeout. So timeout to consider what to do here, fourth and 12 with the ball in the 31. This game is going to be rebroadcast on November 13th at 4 p.m. on EBTV Channel 3 and, and on Sunday, November 14th at 8 p.m. But you can access the games anytime on the web. You go to the EBTV website, www.ebtv.org, and click on Video On Demand, or go to the public library website, ebpl.org, and click on the EBTV3 link and... Watch video on demand. See any? Click on any other program, not just the sports, but all the community-related programs that EBTV does. And we'd like to thank the EBTV technical crew for coming out and supporting East Brunswick High School athletics for all these many years, 20 plus years. Great to see those old classic games on TV. How many times have you seen yourself on yeah, TV? Yeah, I know. I, mean, I thought the shorts were longer. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you see some things. You go, well, really? <laughs> The hair was longer. The shorts were shorter back then. <laughs> yeah. All right, fourth and 12. Quinton in motion. And that pass was intended for Jared Lynch off his hands, looking for a penalty there. And Coach Borden looking for it too. It looked like a little bit of a bump from behind. And East Brunswick will turn it over on downs. So Bears unable to capitalize on the South Brunswick fumble. Again, I keep, I keep saying it. I, I know. I, I just like on, the, you know, a first down play, you just get the ball back where you, if you're South Brunswick here, maybe take a chance and, and go deep. They really haven't tried to, you know, except for that one long pass play, really throw the ball down the field. Burkowski is in there. And another pitch, this time to Cleffy, tries to get it around the outside, gets pushed out of bounds after about a six-yard gain. Yeah, Pukowski, number 10 in at quarterback for the Vikings. Second, call it four. Back to pass, Pukowski cranks it up. That ball was, oh, and the penalty is going to be called for interference, but that's really an uncatchable pass. If it's, if it's four or five yards, three or four yards short of the receiver. Eesh. They might have a discussion and say, listen, I think that is might, what, might be what they're doing. Let's see. A pass interference on the green. 15 yards from the line of scrimmage. 
first down. A lot of boos there in the crowd. You know what? That's also, you throw the ball down the field, you, you can get a penalty like that. Well, Although, a lot of booze in the crowd because right. the, you know, a little bit of contact there on the play to Lynch. Right. Um, and that ball was definitely not catchable. It just. Yeah, that was, that was that a duck, too, if East Brunswick could kind of locate that, that ball. That was not a well thrown ball. Perkowski now operating on the 48 of the Bears inside handoff. Uh, the ball's on ball's the ground on the again. Ground, yeah. As Bukowski pulled that back out, and two series, Bukowski, two balls on the ground, and East Brunswick will take over. And this, this game doesn't look like two teams that are no. hungry for playoffs. This is two nervous teams right now. Did you um, did you see Muha get hurt or? I I don't know. I don't see him. You know, uh, I don't see him on the sideline and you know by the coaching staff. So maybe I don't see him sitting on the bench. Maybe it's just the South Brunswick strategy to change up their quarterbacks. Lynch, hop, step, jump. A little bit of lacrosse dip dodging there and just trying to get inside Viking territory. Gets down to the 46. Second down and five, two minutes, 30 seconds left to go in the first half. That is an inside handoff to Josh Todd. Todd gets down to the 43. East Brunswick number 39, Josh Todd on the carry. About third and three here. And three. Coming up under two minutes left, so. And East Brunswick has two of its timeouts remaining. A little bunch formation down here, maybe something. And uh, Quinton got kind of bumped and held at the line, and that pass was so far ahead of him. I don't know who they, the referees were looking at. The referees looking downfield with the ball. Coach Bourne's got a decision here. Does he want to pin them back? And it looks like he is going to. That incomplete pass stopped the clock, too, and it gives South Brunswick a chance to get the ball back with three timeouts. Who's the punter? They only have 10, right? They only have 10 out there. How does that happen? Yeah, punter didn't realize he was punting. Augusto Silva. A nice punt. He should, whoa, picks it up at the three yard line. And getting out to just over the five. Yeah, you better, wow. if you catch it inside there, the you 10, be you better, you know. Well, catch it, but catch it going backwards and kind of set yourself. And he almost got tackled down at the two. Tyrin Fairman. Unless you're Devin Hester, you probably shouldn't be trying that. Yeah, he had, what, two this year, too, yeah. after a couple he had of a years. Drought, right? drought. Minute 38 left to go in this first half. And again, it's at halftime, we will be honoring our senior members of the cheerleading squad and the marching band. South Brunswick is going to be a little bit conservative, I would think. Well, if I'm Coach Borden, yeah, I actually definitely. might call timeout no, here. 100%. Because th this quarterback has put two on the ground already in the last two drives. And he did use that one to kind of decide what to do on that fourth down play. So they do only have two. I'm sure you'll see one after this play. He'll call two in a row, and East Brunswick would be able to get the ball back with, with some time left. The gain of about five on that play, second down and five balls on the 11. Long count. And that ball is going to come out to about the 15, looks like, as the Mitch officials will spot it. South Brunswick. No timeout, huh? No timeout, no. Hmm. I don't really get that. Right? They have two left. Yeah. Hmm. 
Well, I would think that even if, if there is a stop here on third down that you might want to use one just to get that punt to force a punt because you never know what happens on, a, on the snap or on the return. He gets out to about the 16, 17, could be close to a first down. But I guess Coach Borden again is content to run the clock here. Number 12, Craig. And officials will stop the clock with and eight seconds left. And they're going to take a measurement here, but, you know, they might have the first down here and then it's all for naught, but you have two timeouts. You, you, you know, you take one before that play and then one, you know, here, don't let that time wait to time run. They got it, though. Yeah, they got the first down. First down. And they'll restart the clock, and that will be it. They won't even have to run another play. Please make sure you get your 50-50s. Last chance here on the home sideline. Get your 50-50s now. And South Brunswick is just going to chalk it up to a deep possession, not bother running another play, and that our score at halftime, the Bears seven and Vikings six. We'll be back with the halftime festivities in just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bears cheerleaders. <laughs> Senior night here at Jade Oil Field, and this is the way we honor the dedication and commitment of not just the seniors themselves for the commitment here, but the parents as well. And right now, we'll introduce our senior cheerleaders and their parents. Bella Toto and her mom, Yolanda. Vicki Brower, accompanied by her parents, Marianne and Keith. Jamie Spinelli, accompanied by parents, Karen and Dennis. Shania Guadalupe, her parents, Nadia and Hector. Brittany Stafford, accompanied by parents Michelle and Barry. Accompanied by parents Robin and Larry, Elise Schreier. 
Lee Schreier, accompanied by her parents, Robin and Larry. Jillian Carroll, accompanied by her parents, Denise and Dennis. And those are the senior cheerleaders and their parents on senior night here at Jade Oil Field. And their coach, Lori Bergen, the Bear, and the other members of the cheerleading team down there as they are assembling at midfield. And we'll give it a nice shot here uh, on the field there. <laughs> and these cheerleaders perform it in the fall season at soccer games, wrestling, ma uh, wrestling matches and basketball games in the, in the winter, football games, obviously. So it's a very, very, hec very hectic schedule. Now, we will focus our attention on the performance and the senior parents' recognition for members of the East Brunswick High School Marching Band. Okay, and here we have the senior uh, band members as well as their parents. So we had Tara Dwyer, Natalie Gutice, both color guard. Right there was Tatiana Morgan, color guard. Senior Jacqueline Roberman, accompanied by her parents. And there's senior Jacqueline Roberman, also part of the color guard with her parents, escorting her out. Awesome, perfect. Good stuff. Now, senior band Great. I'll talk to you the third There's senior Ariel Benamu, band member, with her parents, and looks like actually her brother, who I taught, Zohar. And senior Sarah Cho, also part of the band. The band is under the direction of David Poppenhagen. And here's senior Catherine Hahn, drum major. As you can see, they got a flower, another gift, and getting their picture taken and then lining up along the sideline. So the color guard's near midfield and the band is lining up along the sideline. And here's Victoria Hahn. And Jim and Wei Han there, parents of Victoria Han. And now our senior boys for senior Ryan Bruskin. And here's Ryan Bruskin. What is that instrument there, Ken? A trombone. Okay. My Just daughter even knows that. that. My <laughs> daughter even knows <laughs> that one. <laughs> and she's going to be three in January. Okay. I, I, that's <laughs> what I thought. I didn't want to sound like a fool. Well, the Little Einsteins program does wonders for musical awareness. Here's Michael Chen. Let's see if I can pick out the instrument here. So far, I'm 0 for 1. It's got a... Nice family there. A lot of people came out to support Michael. And the band just had a competition here last Saturday night here at Jade Oil Field. 
living as I do across the street from the high school, I could hear most of it. Yeah, when I go to my sister's as well. Here's Jake Olson. Now those have to be drums. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you, that must not be easy carrying that around. That's gonna be a few pounds. Looks like his parents are there to accompany him. Here's senior Christopher Yee. Here's Dennis Willis. And very nice. So we had the color guard, a couple senior members, and they did the girls band members, and now the boy band members. And there you get a good shot of everyone. Not only the members, but also their parents. And and we'll be right back with the performance. The band will be performing their 2010 show, Classic Rock and Roll. Drum majors Katie Hahn and Michael Fine. Is the band ready? Band, you may take the field.
gentlemen, the East Brunswick High School Marching Band. The band is under the direction of David Pappenhagen, assistant band director Joshua Becker, drill design by Bob Gupta, marching tech Steve Volker, color guard instructors are Cheryl Gillick and Debbie Yaniga, the percussion instructor is Randy Kovacs. The band will be competing tomorrow at the Hackrow Horsham Cavalcade of Bands competition. Let's have one more round of applause for your East Brunswick High School marching band. Okay, so you're gonna kick this way, am I correct? Right here, straight line. Straight line right here. Straight line right here. Okay? And I'll take it from here. Okay, home, receive. Visitors, we'll kick. Shake hands, guys. Good luck. South Brunswick opened the scoring with a 39-yard touchdown pass from Muha to Cleffy down the far sideline, but the extra point missed, 6-0. East Brunswick comes back after a 56-yard kickoff return by Jared Lynch, a good position on South Brunswick's 29-yard line. And Mike Sai busted out of a tackle and rushed down the close sideline here, 18-yard touchdown run, extra point is good. And the Bears lead seven to six, and that's our scoring right now. South Brunswick not only missed that extra point, but they also missed a 23-yard field goal in the first half and had two fumbles. And in talking with the people in the press box here, we don't understand why South Brunswick's coach subbed for Muha, who seemed to have a decent control of the game, brought in a cold quarterback on his first series, put the ball on the ground. As, again, Bears will be operating left to right on your television screen. Winner of this game has to cross his fingers because tomorrow, the game against from between Howell and Brick was postponed from tonight to tomorrow and needs the, the Howell team to lose that game to Brick. Although there is still some mathematical possibility that the winner here and a Howell winner could both go. Kick off to the close sideline here, picking it up for the Bears is number 20. 20, D Donald Rochelle brings it out over the 30 yard line to the 35. Yeah, nice nice uh, return there. And, and I think South Brunswick smartly kicked away from Lynch there after the big return that he had uh, to set up East Brunswick's uh, only score in the first half. Mike Sy back in at quarterback for the Bears. Todd Quinton and Lynch, the backfield behind Mike Sy. Lynch gets the ball, stumbles over his own man there, but does manage to get it out to the 40 yard line. Gain of three, second down and seven. We'll see if both teams kind of come out this second half uh, a little bit more crisp. A lot of turnovers, you know, a few penalties. Really wasn't a, a real well-played first half. Timeout now. Officials timeout for some reason. Uh, T is still on the uh, yeah, field. Yeah, T is still on the field. Second and seven. Sai on the keeper, bust through three tackles, and is upended for a gain of a couple, maybe. Yeah, number 56 there for South Brunswick came in like a bullet, Rodney Bruden. So here's one of those, you know, third down. Third and about six that, you know, you'd like to, you know, there's big plays Stop. here. Get Brady. Get Brady. Todd up the middle, breaks it, stumbling through, and Cleffy has to bring him down, but not before the Bears get a first down deep. Deep into the secondary there. 
maybe that wasn't the, the person you would expect to carry it when you needed that big first down, but Josh Todd busted it right through the middle. Yeah, plus it was a third and, you know, moderate third down, third and five, third and six, so you don't ex expect the fullback to get that, but it's a nice first down, keeps East Brunswick moving. Single setback behind Cy. Hand off to Lynch around the left side. Tries to cut it inside. Maybe that wasn't the good, the best move there. Ran back into traffic. Gets to the 40. Gain of almost four. Be a second and six. First possession here of the second half. Looks like Sy's checking off at the line. Inside handoff. That's Josh Todd. And another third down for East Brunswick. Manageable though, about, about three, maybe a long, uh, short four, long three here. And again, these a lot of times are the, the downs that you, you need to convert to keep the drive alive. This, this might be two down territory. Quinton. Kind Get stuffed at the line of scrimmage. That's going to be about all they give him, maybe to the 42. Yeah, he's lucky to get back to where he was. He kind of danced around there. There, there was a little bit of penetration, but he, he just didn't hit that hole hard. And we really haven't, you know, called his his name too much tonight. Bears sending out the punt team right away. No no debate here about two down territory, as Quinton was stopped for no gain. Silva will drop back and punt. Had a nice punt at the end of the first half which unfortunately for South Brunswick, Tyrant Fairman caught it at the three yard line, got back out to about the six. Silva takes a step back. This one's a high end over end punt. This might be coming back a little bit. Yep. I just saw the rotation there. And it's gonna fall down at the 23 yard line. Kyle Winders jumps on it there. So not much of a net game there on that punt. Again, Silva backed up when he caught that one, and that may throw off his timing a little bit. And I'm just taking a look here as South Brunswick is coming out of the huddle, and it looks like they're staying the same way with the quarterback who ended the... No, they've got a Wildcat now. Yeah? Running right now. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Perkowski looks like under center. Grand handoff to Harper. Harper gets a couple of yards off right tackle. I, I wonder what happened to number two, Javon Tyree. Maybe a rib or. Well, he's, he is he is up. He's standing on the sideline right. at, the, at the 40. Yeah, I see him. Second down at about six. Full house backfield there, handoff deep to Harper. Harper gets it out across the 30, dropped it about the 31. And Ken, have we seen uh, TJ Perkowski throw the ball yet? Has he attempted a pass? Mm, he did, he threw up that one, oh, that's that right. one the, quail exactly. that uh, was mm -hmm. the pass interference call. Right. Third down and three. Harper gets the carry again and gets driven back. No gain. Going to bring up a fourth down. Couple bears there. Look like Joe Cargliari made the first contact, but there was a couple bears there. And South Brunswick is getting man-to-man, uh, -man, you know, coverage 
uh, on their one receiver and the safety is not really involved. So they, they might want to take a look at that and maybe give that a shot one time. Jared Lynch back in single safety to receive this punt. Bears almost got it. Lynch calls for a fair catch at the 42. And Bears will take over first and 10 there with 548 left to go in this third quarter. This game will be rebroadcast on November 13th at 4 p.m. and at no, November 14th at 8 p.m. It's also available online. You go to the ebtv3.org website and click on the video on demand. Pick up this program or any program, community service as well as sports. Mike Sai. Little movement there. Somebody jumped. We got a dead ball. Encroachment on the defense. Five yards. Replay first down. First down and five now. Changes perhaps the play calling a little bit here. Maybe a little more of a gamble. Yeah, you could. Those are always good downs to do it where you're, <clears throat> you have a first and short. You called it there, Ken. Got him. And Farkas is downfield, and he's got it. Knocked down at the 19. And like you said, Ken, you know, a first and five. If you don't complete it, it's second and five, still very manageable, but you kind of catch South Brunswick off guard. You don't throw the ball too much, and Farkas was open, open and Cy was able to get it to him. Gain of 32 on the play, 33-yard gain on the play. Brings the ball to the 19-yard line. Bears will operate first and 10, full house backfield. Quinton, Todd, and Lynch. The pitch is to Lynch. Tries to cut it outside, gets a block from Quinton, but cuts it inside right into the arms of two South Brunswick defenders for a loss on the play. And number seven, TJ Taylor for South Brunswick, didn't make the tackle, but he did the right thing. He made sure he had outside containment and forced Lynch to cut it up. And there his teammates were able to make the tackle. So, you know, you need, you need to be disciplined like that. And uh, he did a nice job. Loss of two on the play, second and 12, ball on the 21 yard line. Farkas splits out the bottom of your screen. From the shotgun, Sai hands off inside to Lynch. Gets no gain. I know we've seen a couple games and we saw Coach Borden one time with number 98, Augusta Silva try you know, a 30-something yard field goal. So you wonder here if they, they get a couple more yards, if Coach Borden will be willing to go for it or maybe kick a long field goal, field goal to go up. Well, you got points. some substitutions here. Lynch is going to run a, run the, the offense right now. Like Urshel and Euro also checked in for the Bears on offense. Quinton will be the lone setback behind Jared Lynch, who will operate out of the shotgun. Lynch, direct snap, takes the handoff. Jukes looking for some room here. He's got to get down to the 11. Does, gets inside the 10 to the 5. Knocked out of bounds. Jared Lynch picks up more than enough for the first down. Brings up first and goal for the Bears at the 5-yard line. And, and I like that. You know, you get, you know, arguably your best player, the ball, uh, with some space. And, and, you know, had some nice box, but that's just uh, using some good vision and, and good cutbacks. Ball spotted just outside the five yard line. Three minutes, 49 seconds left to go in quarter number three of a pivotal 
GMC matchup here. Side bouncing around like a pinball. Does manage to break it into the end zone for a touchdown. And with the extra point here, Ace Brunswick can go up a touchdown in the two-point conversion. Silva out of a Rich Ura hold here to attempt the extra point. Kick is up. And good. Yeah. <laughs> Mile high in the air, but it works. Yeah, it looked like a pitching wedge. That 65 degree flop iron, you know? <laughs> exactly. Phil Mickelson. Yeah, that's the one I always skull and it hit a line drive when I try that, but it counts. Bears up 14 to six. Again, the winner of this game has to rely on a little help from Brick Township to beat Howell. Although the Bears have already beaten Howell, just the way that the standings and the rankings and the power points work, Bears need a little bit of help. And just to, to go back to something there, East Brunswick's defense after East Brunswick had a punt, did a good job of holding South Brunswick to a three and out and uh, we're able to convert on a, on a, I think, two or three third downs there. So uh, five plays, 57 yards, took two minutes and six seconds, and East Brunswick is, you know, a comfortable touchdown lead and a two-point conversion that South Brunswick would need to tie the game. Tyron Freeman, number one. Daryl Harper, number three, are back deep awaiting this kickoff. And again, a line drive squibber. Going to get inside the 10. Doesn't go out of bounds. Picked up by Freeman. Who gets wrestled down by Rochelle at the 11-yard line. Right. And that's little usually what happens when you dance around a little bit. And well, that was a little dangerous kickoff. That ball goes out of bounds. South Brunswick gets the ball in excellent field position. But instead, the ball skitters around to the 10-yard line. And has enough English on it to stay in bounds on this crowned surface. Slight crown, you can't notice it from the television, but there is a kind of bubble on the surface here. The, the ends do slope down. Perkowski still in at quarterback. Harper set back behind him. Along with Trey Hall, the inside handoff to Trey Hall. But the pitch to Harper. Perkowski just got rid of that. I'll tell you, what a, what a play, dangerous play, but what a play to be able to get rid of that ball. And Spinelli came up to tackle Harper. Inside handoff, that's going nowhere fast. Trey Hall from the Vikings gets perhaps a yard. No, actually they're gonna give him negative yardage. No, no gain, okay. That's about the best that could have, could have been on that one. Couple bears on that. I saw number 62, Joe Quagliari on the tackle. Couple other bears right there as well, so. This is the down South Brunswick's had a little bit of trouble with this uh, third down conversion. East Brunswick, you know, on a couple uh, last drives especially, we were able to convert. This would be big just to keep uh, East Brunswick's offense off the field. Ball's on Ball's the ground. Ball's on the ground, yeah. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of action there you can see on the... Referees are going to, going to give it to East Brunswick. Bears have it. Who's, who's going to come up under that pile with the ball? Could have been Jake Wojowicz was down in there. Excellent field position for the Bears. We'll take over first and ten. Three fumbles so far on the day for South Brunswick. 
Bears will have it first and 10 on the 20 yard line. And I don't want to say this is going to be the game, but if East Brunswick can get a score here, the way South Brunswick's offense has been, it's going to be tough for South Brunswick to come back. Dash Todd up the middle. Gain of four. And this is what East Brunswick does well. Keep the ball on the ground, churn out some clock, get some positive yards. They just have to make sure, and I'm sure Coach Bourne will talk to him. You, know, you don't want to, you want to make sure that you take care of the ball in this situation. Two hands on the ball. South Brunswick needs a big play. Second down and seven. Todd, the lone setback, tries to get the through. And the inside handoff almost had trouble with the exchange there with Mike Sy. At best, no gain there. Yeah, I wouldn't want mine Lynch in the Wildcat again. Just get his hands on the ball again. No, we get South Brunswick thinking at least. Right. I just like that as much as you can. You get your best player the ball and let him create. Third down, a long seven. Bears have to get to the 10 yard line. Lynch around the outside, looking for that first down marker. Get, breaks a tackle and manages to squirt through to the six yard line. And give some credit to number 31, Julian Quinn, and said a real nice block on the outside to spring him to the outside, and then Lynch did the rest. Looked like a bad angle was taken by the South Brunswick D-back there. Lynch was able to bounce off him and gain four more yards. So first and goal on the six yard line, coming down to the very end of the third quarter. Sai so checking off at the line, it looks like. Handoff inside goes nowhere. That'll be it, fourth quarter here. And our score after three quarters of play. Bears 14, Vikings six. I'd like to congratulate two of our coaches from the fall sports season for achieving the GMC Coach of the Year honors, Brian McInerney in girls tennis and Kara Sefcik, the girls gymnastics coach. And good luck to our cross country and gymnastics teams there in the state sectionals on Saturday, tomorrow. Tonight was senior night, we honored the senior football players, the senior band parents, senior cheerleader and cheerleaders and their parents. And I know we got 12 minutes, we got a whole quarter left here, but you know, I'm, I'm impressed with this East Brunswick team this year. Uh, I don't think a ton was expected of them losing a lot from last year, although they do have a bunch of quality players that are back this year. You have a new quarterback, uh, a lot of new faces on offense. You had, you know, a little bit of a core on defense, but, you know, coming into this game four and three, with a chance to win and you know maybe one thing possibly needing to go your way to make the playoffs. You, you have to give credit to these players, to these seniors, to the coaching staff, um, you know, just maximizing what they have uh, out there. So th this would be big right here if you get another score. Se could... Second and goal. Mike Sy looks again, checking off the play at the line. Same play <laughs> they ran last time up the middle. South Brunswick not falling for it. No gain on the play. Third down and goal. Maybe see South Brunswick get a little momentum here if they're able to hold the Bears from six. 
Sai Sai keeps it. Nope. Nothing. Wrapping up nicely there for South Brunswick was Stephen Michalchuk. And he was the one, Michalchuk, who was the one who got tangled up with Mike Sai in the first quarter and let Sai go. Right. And you're going to see East Brunswick trying to make it a two possession game here. If they're able to make this field goal, we'll make South Brunswick have to score twice. This will be a 21 yard attempt. No wind to speak of here today at Jay Doyle Field. From a Rich Ura hold, Gusto Silva. Snap, kick is up. And it's good. Seventeen to six, our score. Well, this is this for South Brunswick here. Really, uh, they had a couple big plays, but they had the one big pass play to score. And uh, other than that, and then uh, you know another big play pass play, they really have not been able to do much. Uh, offensively, obviously the injury to number two, Javon Tyree, has hurt. Um, you know, for some reason, we're not sure whether an injury or coach's decision. Uh, number 16, Nick Muha, uh, is not at quarterback anymore. And number 10, TJ Perkowski, um, has a couple fumbles. So South Brunswick really, you know, they, they could use a good kickoff return or, or something just to get a little momentum. But right now they... Uh, they're in trouble. Silva will tee it off and back deep for South Brunswick is... Is that number two? No, that's 24. Okay. Jaleel Alston and Harper. So Fairman, Tyrin Fairman, who had a couple of mistakes back there, is not back deep. That ball pops up and... The good return that you were looking for. Yeah, there, that Rich. helps. Yep. 40 out to the 42. That that helps. Jaleel Alston get it out to the 42. The ball was handled cleanly and nice seam developed right up the middle. Well, Jake Wojewicz on the tackle there. Ball at the 42-yard line where the South Brunswick will take over. First and 10. And it looks like another new quarterback here. There we go, here. right, number nine, Dan Gorzinski. He'll give it a shot. The pitch to Cleffy. Cleffy trying to take it around the outside, wrapping up well there is Wojewicz for only a three-yard gain. Cleffy, who has the long touchdown pass in the first, in the second quarter, excuse me, early parts of the second quarter from Nick Muha. Gain of three, ball at the 45 yard line, second down and seven. Pass down the sidelines. And they're going to call Quinton for face guarding there as that pass was behind the intended receiver. And that's one of those wheel routes. They try to sneak the back out, and we'll hear what the call is here in a second. We got pass interference on the defense, 15 yards from the line of scrimmage, first down. And I thought actually Quinnen did a, did, did a good job there. You can sometimes lose track of the back. He kept with his assignment, I guess, just didn't turn to look for the ball. Couldn't see it great from this end, but. That was a little more obvious than the last one, which right. was the, uh, that, that kind of dying quail pass that almost was intercepted. Gorzinski, with the full house backfield behind him, will hand it off to the second guy through. And then that's yet to work, you know, just a slow developing play. East Brunswick's getting penetration and that just has not been successful for South Brunswick. Okay. 
And not that there's, you know, two, three minutes left, but, you know, South Brunswick. Needs two touchdowns. Right, needs to kind of quicken up the pace a little bit here. I know nine minutes is a lot, but, you know, East Brunswick gets on the field and they get a couple first downs before you know it. The, the clock becomes a factor. TJ Taylor splits out to the near side here. Inside handoff, again, not much going on there. Flag late, thrown. Yeah, late flag, usually that's in the spot of holding, usually. <laughs> we assume that it's... And they'll take him back, I'm sure, here. Got Holden on the offense. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. Replay second down. And we'd like to thank referee Gary Barella for being wired up here. One of the games we did it, there was only like one penalty, so we don't have a chance to thank the referee, but we've had several penalties here. Gorzinski. Going to take it back, looking to pass over the middle. Oh. Threw it behind Cleffy. Yeah, Cleffy had, had a him. step on Jared Lynch. Puts it in front of him. He's running down that sideline. One of the Bear defenders got back there, but didn't get his hands up in time or, or wasn't in the right angle to deflect it or knock that one down. Third down and 20 now. Yeah, you don't like you don't like to be in these positions uh, as an offense, especially when you're struggling. Third and 20 is not easy to convert, and East Brunswick has um, you know a couple guys deep here, really laying off. Off oh, oh, obvious passing situation. Quaglieri is trying to get a base there, and, and breaking through is Harper. Gets come down about, about yard the two-yard yeah. line, and and I don't know what happened to, to Farkas on that play. There is a flag on the play, though. Probably for a face mask on the way down. You know what? Uh, there was almost too much space, and then didn't really make a play on the ball either. Yeah, it was kind of in between. Didn't make a play on the ball. I thought he was going to just or lay the guy him. out, you know, pick the guy up and just drop him at the... Uh... And... See how quickly it can things can change though. An innocent play, ball just loft, lofted up. East Brunswick almost in too much of a prevent where they they just let the ball get caught in front and then Daryl Harper makes a nice play to get to the two. I guess the flag was picked up or would have heard something there. Hand off Cleffy. Looks like he's in. Touchdown on a two yard run. And South Brunswick should be going for two here. And these are something I know, at least when I played in high school, you know, you have, uh, you know, a few plays as a coach that you like for this uh, particular spot on the field that you, you do practice. So they'll pick one that they feel comfortable with here. And if they are able to convert, we'll be able to tie it with the field goal if they get the ball back. So that's why they're going for two here. Looks like a run formation. Full house backfield. Gorzinski not on the keeper there. did not make it. Got knocked sideways. Looked like he could have fallen forward. Somebody knocked him sideways for the Bears. Not really a creative play call there. I mean, not that you can't score with that play, but. Seven minutes and 50 seconds left to go. So this game is not out of reach. And as we take a look here, Coach Borden making sure, counting everyone, make sure he's got the right numbers. Look like he missing, he's missing a couple people here. And then you, you, you want to make sure here, this is um, you know big kickoff return. You want to make sure you get some good field position at least. Thank you. 
Hey, you got to be ready here, too. It looks like Coach Borden might have the hands team out. Um, and that's why there is a little confusion. He might be thinking South Brunswick might be trying an onside kick here. So as you can see, he's only got one guy back. He's got Lynch up. He's got Cy in there in the second line. So you got some of your guys with uh, the better hands in the second row. And usually what you want is that front line to come up and, and block to allow the guys in the second line to come up and, and uh, make the recovery if it is an onside kick. South Brunswick here can maybe kick one deep and try to pin East Brunswick back because they only have one guy back. And that's Donald Rochelle, number 20, who's right now about at the 20-yard line. The ball has to go 10 yards, so unless the Bears touch it on before that. Rochelle picks it up, looking to get a, gets a nice Buy run. Yeah, uh, clip. And it's knocked out of bounds, but that, I didn't see the clip. Yeah. I, I saw a nice hit by. They're saying a hold, but I, I thought I saw one too. Number 48's complaining, so either he did make the nice block or got caught for something. Hayden Warren there. Seven forty. Left to go. Hold it. Offense, 10 yards, first down. And that hurts now, you're inside the 20. 23, he's saying. Rich, was, yeah, Rich Ura. He's had a couple today. Well, East Brunswick here needs a couple first downs. At least they would like to take some time off the clock. Mike Sy on the keeper gets brought down for a loss of one. Looks, Looks like he's up banked up, yeah. running a little gingerly back to the huddle. South Brunswick fired up here. Todd got it across the 20 to the 22. And I'll tell you, South Brunswick's really creeping creeping guys up here. They're really expecting East Brunswick to run the ball. So they're really, they have about, you know. Eight, nine guys. Yeah. Well, well, if you don't have the pass offense to right. keep everybody honest, you're going to have nine in the box. Third down and seven. Farkas split out. And co the coach, they're doing a lot of all the bowling here. Yeah. Julian Quinton. Quinton needs to get legs moving. Nice. Does break yeah. it out to the 30. Keeps the legs moving. Nice effort there. And that, you know, buys East Brunswick another couple minutes off the clock. Obviously, the field position gets a little bit better here. And if you, you'll look here, you know, East Brunswick does this normally just the way they play, but they'll, quarterback Mike Sy will wait for the signal uh, with the play clock until it gets under five before he takes a snap to take every second that he can off this clock. So he'll look, he sees the count starting, and then he'll take the snap. Inside handoff. Yeah, some good hitting right there. And this is really where, I, although, you know, on the last carry, Quinnen did a lot on his own, this is where you really rely both offensively and defensively on your offensive line and defensive line. So th this is where a lot of those battles are won. So defense basically knows what's coming. The offense is running the ball. So it's 
you know, just good smash mouth football here. Again, Cy waiting till the very last minute. Lynch. Good job by Lynch, holding on to that ball with two hands once the contact is made. Third and six now. Bears have to get to the 46 yard line. And there'll be about under four minutes left once this play is run, so time is becoming a factor here. This really is a big, big play here for both teams. Full house backfield. Size got it still. But gang tackled for no gain at the 35. And that'll bring up a fourth down. Maybe a little too conservative as South Brunswick will burn one of their three timeouts to preserve clock here before the punt. Well, this game will be rebroadcast on November 13th at 4 p.m. and on Sunday, November 14th at 8 p.m or you can watch it online. Go to the EBTV website, www.ebtv.org, or and click on the video on demand, or go to the public library website, ebpl.org, and click on the link to EBTV in the lower left part of the page, and click on EBHS Sports to watch this or any other sports programming, as well as the community service programming that EBTV provides. And we'd like to, again, thank the EBTV technical crew coming out and setting all this up and allowing us the opportunity to bring East Brunswick High School Athletics into your living room. Well, East Brunswick's offense was able to get one first down and get the ball out from their, about their 19 to the 35, so field position won't be quite as good for South Brunswick unless they have a good return here. Fairman and Harper are back deep for there's good punt as it drives Fairman back to the 26. Good return. Yep, gets it out to the 45, so 19 yard return. Well, sort of what we expected here, not that maybe the way that we got to the to the score, but a 17-12 game here with 335 left. So we, you know, at least I was expecting a pretty tight game and We've got that now, so. And again, and Dan Gorzinski stays in there. Single setback behind him. Cleffy in motion. Gorzinski coming back. Jared Lynch with the sack. Drives Gorzinski back to the 33 yard line. A loss of 12 on the play. Ooh. And he's had a couple big plays like that. And I like how East Brunswick's been using him to come off the edge a little bit. He's just using his speed. And since uh, Gorzinski takes that deep of a drop, uh, you know, it's tough for a lineman to, to keep up with Lynch. He's just got such a speed advantage on him. Matt Goble split to the bottom of your screen. TJ Taylor to the top of the screen. This time, Gorzinski is going to try a, a keeper, comes around, left tackle, gets two. Don't yep. understand that yeah, one yikes. when you're down. Yikes with that call. Acting like there's under three minutes left. <laughs> Gorzinski looking at a third down and, and essentially 20. Why? And Orshel comes right in front and just, he read that one. He could have picked it off. I don't really get why he smacked at it. Again, I don't know why you're faking the run there, which just takes more time. And again, he's, he's throwing a, across his body, but good play there by number 20, Donald Urschel. He should have tried to pick it off though. I think he was there in time. He read it, like you said, perfectly and just smacked it away. 
Fourth down. South Brunswick has to get to the East Brunswick 45 yard line. And they got a cover two here. They got Farkas and Lynch as the safeties on half the field here to give some support. They want to make sure no one gets behind them. Oh, and Jared Lynch almost came up, it hit the ground and it popped out of his hands. Yeah, it's better that he didn't. The East Brunswick will get the ball deeper. Deeper. And there's still time. I mean, South Brunswick does have two timeouts left here. So with the playcock in high school, they, you know, if they get a stop, they can get the, the ball back. But and that time, Lynch, the speed good to, on the closing coming in on that ball. Exactly, and he really had the big play. Of the, I, I question uh, that. I, I question whether or not to, to use his speed off the end to try to pressure the quarterback, or, or in this case, Coach Borden had him back in the secondary. Right. Yeah. He, that that was the, the the big play. That sack it really uh, changed what South Brunswick wanted to do. Bears looking just to, to grind the clock here. Jared Lynch gets tackled at the 35-yard line. South Brunswick will burn their second timeout. We've got about three on the, the game there. You've got to make sure here you hold on to the ball. Again, Bears need help tomorrow. Howell will play Brick and for the Bears to make the playoffs, we need a little help there from Brick Township to come through. There is, somebody said, a mathematical possibility that even if Brick win, or excuse me, Howell wins, that the way these quality points work, the Bears, if they win here, could sneak in. Right. So, but that's stretching the laws of probability way too far. Well, you gotta, you know, East Brunswick still has a job to do here, but, you know, regardless of that, you knew you had to win at least this game and, and uh, you know, if they can get another first down here or, you know, get that clock to run down, they'll be able to do that. Second and eight. Again, the, the clock is in East Brunswick's favor as long as they can grind this ball. And Lynch gets around left tackle. He's going to drive it all the way home. Going to run it in 36 yards for a Bears touchdown. Surprise, surprise, you're waiting, you're waiting for that uh, two so yards in a cloud of dust here. Uh, and doesn't really Lynch matter. Takes it off. Celebration penalty, but Left tackle, that's but. not going to make a difference, really. The only thing now, though, you, you still have 201 left. I mean, it's a two possession game here. But South Brunswick does have a little time. I think the, I think the penalty is actually on South Brunswick. Oh, okay. Should have it on the kickoff. That's yeah, no we, can, we can hear that that the penalty is going to be there. Be a and that was an unsportsmanlike penalty against South Brunswick. And, and the penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. So that'll drive South Brunswick back even further. Taking half the distance to the goal here really doesn't make a lot of sense. Silva will attempt the extra point. Again, one of those high chip shots, right. but good. Bears up 24-12. And for a South Brunswick team that's averaging close to 25 or so points right. per game to hold them to 12. Part of its defense, part of its sloppiness. Yeah, and uh, I mean, a lot. the thing too with East Brunswick, I mean, they, they came out a little sloppy and, and didn't play their best in the first quarter, but you know, in the first half, but when they've needed to, they've had some big plays both on offense and defense. 
a lot of people making big plays. I thought a real big play for East Brunswick was uh, Lynch's kickoff uh, return that set uh, up East Brunswick's score to go up 7-6 to kind of give him a little bit of momentum. And, uh, you know, just a lot, of, a lot of people making plays for East Brunswick. And Silva doesn't realize that he's right. going to be kicking off from the South Brunswick 45. I mean, you could do two things here. You could just boot it as far as you can to have a touchback, or, you know, if you really wanted to, you could almost do an onside kick here and try to get the ball back if you wanted. I mean, he's probably going to try to pin him back as far as he can, but you really have that option. You can try to kick it deeper. If you wanted to try an onside kick, you could actually do that and just try to get the ball. Alston and Harper are back deep for the Vikings, and Silva is going to pop it up in the air. And it went into the end zone. So automatic touchback doesn't even matter much there. South Brunswick will get the ball in their 20. I still like the Canadian rule. We're yeah. Canadian football. We got to run it out of the end zone. Right. Yeah, I was talking to point. someone about that. Oh, you should have saw the school. ending of the, of the game against the, uh, the other week, uh, Montreal and Toronto. Crazy. Then they have the rugby rules. That, that's one of the things. But right. uh, with high school football, once that ball goes into the end zone, it's an automatic touchback. They don't allow any anybody to come piling in there to try to recover it in the end zone. Right. Grzynski. Under center. Uh, I'm sorry. That's, that's yes, that is Grzynski. Yep. He's looking to pass. And East Brunswick will give him that all day long. Uh, Harper. Yep. Harper gets it. That's not even a first down, so the clock is not going to uh, stop. Gain of five, se second and five. Goes in, Josinski dropped back, mm -hmm. coverage. And that's fine if you're East Brunswick. I mean, you're. No, they're going to call. Uh, no, they're going to say, caught it? Yes, they are going to give him the catch. Chains will move. Right, you'll give him five, six, seven yards every time. You want to keep him in front of you. Clock moves once the chains get moved. And they've tried that a few times, that little up and out with uh, a, number that's three. That's a throw. It is. Throwing, a, you know, you're, you're rolling left, and then you're throwing right across the field, downfield. It's a hard throw for a high school quarterback to make. Coach Rick Mance can't be happy with his quarterback quarterback play here. Inconsistent at best. Again, South Brunswick basically going four wide receivers, one back in for blocking. Bears are rushing three. Dropping eight in the coverage. Pass on the sideline is complete. Matt Goble gets a pass there for seven yards, goes out of bounds. Inbounds, oh, no, out of bounds, sorry. They weren't sure, now he's saying to go. They, they said first to, well, here we go, clock's moving. Jared Lynch with the interception. Looking to return it and stumbles down right at midfield. And I'll tell you, he's, he's had a nice game for East Brunswick, uh, Jared Lynch, on both sides of the ball, also on special teams, as well as... Uh, quarterbacking. Qu yep, a quarterbacking, lot. Quarterbacking, yeah. And a lot of the Bears have. Let's, uh, let's, let's give credit to this Bears team. Uh, you yep. know, I, I, for me, for one, I, I thought they would struggle a little bit more this year. They haven't. I know they've... A couple elite teams that they played, they got beat pretty good, but uh, you know, well, no one, is, no one really expected them to hold up to, to especially the Sayreville. Exactly, but this, this was a gut check type game, uh, type game, and uh, victory formation here as Mike Sai will just take a knee. One more play is all that it will be required here. And the seniors have to feel good. Obviously, everyone on the team has to feel good. Uh, but, but give this Bears team a lot of, a lot of credit, give the coaching staff a lot of credit. 
And uh, now they'll just, I guess, have to wait, like you said, tomorrow to, to see as long as that's still the case that they, they need that result to happen. Well, there's still one more game on the schedule, and that is the annual Battle of Route 18. This time it'll take place down the road in Old Bridge. And that will probably be the last play of the game here as the time is winding under 20 seconds. And, uh, and looking to that game a little bit, you know, in East Brunswick, regardless, they have now where they have the playoff, the uh, consolation playoff game where they'll play someone before that. But Old Bridge, you know, up until tonight, we only had two wins. I know they were playing an Edison team tonight, so might get another win, but they're struggling. But that never seemed to matter. Old Bridge has kind of had East Brunswick's number. Uh, Thanksgiving here. So tough tough loss for South Brunswick and a, and a great win for uh, East Brunswick here tonight. East Brunswick with the win moves to five and three. South Brunswick falls to five and three. Um, and, and like we were talking about before, the information we got was that East Brunswick also needed a little help, but uh, there's a possibility some other people were saying maybe they don't need uh, Howell to lose, but They'll find out shortly. Mike Sy, two touchdowns on the ground, 18 yards in the second quarter to give East Brunswick the lead, and then a five-yard touchdown run makes it 14 to six. Uh, field goal by Augusta Silva, and then the Jared Lynch touchdown at the end there, across uh, around the left side to make our final score 24 to 12. This was uh, again a game that that it seemed a little bit nervous, a little bit tight at the beginning for both sides. And in this case, East Brunswick managed to keep it under wraps. Good quality play. And again, Mike Sy manages a game well. Yeah, he does. Just like, you know, the quarterbacks in the past, they're not asked to do a lot, but they're asked to manage the game well. Yeah, he, he does, like you said, does a great job. He, he gets the most out of uh, his talent. And uh, just like you said, he, he does exactly what you need. Uh, all right, I'd like to thank the EBTV technical crew for their help in broadcasting this game. For Richie Whale and I'm Ken Soroka. Again, the final score here, South Brunswick comes into Jade Oil Field and leaves empty-handed. Bears win 24-12. Have a good night.